I worked as a reporter for a newspaper in a small town about 17 years ago, for the most part covering rotary diners and town council meetings. Boring stuff. Every once in a while, there'd be a little excitement, a car accident usually, but for the most part, it was one hell of a hundrum year. Until the night, a train hit a gravel truck. I was at my home in my living room around 7.30 one evening when I heard a tremendous boom from outside. Being Johnny Reporter, I grabbed my camera bag and headed to see what happened. It didn't take long to find out that a train had hit a double hopper truck at the main intersection in town. The truck had tried to beat the train and lost. The driver managed to get the truck unit and the first hopper it was hauling off the crossing in time, but the train sheared the second hopper right off. It landed in the parking lot of a large building that housed the truck stop and an auction market about 50 yards away. No one was hurt, so I snapped a few pictures and talked to the fire chief. I wanted to get a shot of the hopper in the parking lot, but it was way too dark for a decent photo by that point, so I went home. The next day, things got weird. I went back to the auction market in the morning for a photo, and the couple that runs the place were there. I chatted with them, but didn't really expect to do an interview, since I assumed they weren't there when the accident happened. Turns out they were not only there, they had one hell of a story to tell. The accident had happened on Wednesday, which was one of their normal auction nights, but for some reason, I can't remember what, it was a while ago, they had ended up cancelling. The husband pointed out the auction always ended at 7.15pm and it took about 15 minutes or more to finish up the paperwork. If there had been a scheduled auction that night, there would have been people standing around right when the hopper came flying through the air and landed in the parking lot. Wow, I said, that's a pretty amazing coincidence. Then they told me, that wasn't the creepy part. They themselves had been at the auction market that night with their three-year-old son, working on a few things and taking advantage of the fact that the place was empty. They were about to leave about 7.25, but the husband couldn't get the security code to work on the alarm panel. Every time he tried to enter it, the trouble light came on. It doesn't usually say trouble light on the panel, it's just a red light that the manual referred to as the trouble light which indicates that you've screwed up somehow. Each time ending up the trouble light, flashing at him and him scratching his head. They were still inside the building at this point and could hear the train. The wife said she remembered their son looking out the window and saying, Twain, Twain. Then they heard the boom as the train hit the truck and actually saw the hopper land in the parking lot. They rushed outside and called 911. They stayed in the lot until the emergency people got there, then told them what they had seen. They were both hugely relieved that there hadn't been an auction at night because there could have been a tragedy. Then it occurred to them that if they hadn't been screwing around with their alarm system, they themselves would have been in the parking lot when the hopper landed. That delay more than likely had saved their lives. Shaky, they walked back into the building to take another shot at closing up for the night and going home. When they got back in the building, the trouble light had stopped flashing. The system was working normal again. I've talked to them again over the years and they say the trouble light has never come on since that night. They both told me that they had never believed in anything supernatural before. They weren't religious, never really thought about a higher power, but they were believers now. So was I, and I have been ever since.